Welcome. It's gonna get fit. Isn't that oh, fuck. Hey. <laughs> hey, are you in for this? Yes, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> Who doesn't want to live a long and healthy life? My name is Niklas Jekstedt, and I run three restaurants. My greatest passions are food and health. Since I recently crossed the 40-year-old mark, and it feels like I'm in the middle of my life, thoughts of living for as long as possible run through my mind more frequently. There are six mythical areas in the world where it's common that people live to become 100 year or more. These places are called the Blue Zones. How come you get so old in these places? Who are the people living there? How do they live? What do they eat? And what is the secret to a long and healthy life? I have decided to travel the world and visit the Blue Zones to get answers to my questions. This is the first time I cook breakfast for a hundred year old man. Cafe. Look at that! Jeez! Are you kidding me? She has her own radio show? Yeah, no. You have sex up to a high age as well. Are you done for today or are you going to do more weights? No, no, I, I've already been here for two hours. <laughs> you are hipsters. Yes, but we started it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I will come back knowing how to live to the magic age of 100 or even more. What you're saying, actually, is that my diet can change my gene? Yes, exactly. But you believe in the devil? Yes. In hell, yeah. Bye-bye. It's just difficult to understand. I mean, he's born in 1915. I have now made my way to the United States of America and the city called Loma Linda. It's about a two hour drive east of Los Angeles. So, Early morning here in uh, Luma Linda, where I'm gonna meet up with a lady called Mareike, who is a part of a church called the Seventh-day Adventists. And they're very, very present in this neighborhood of Loma Linda. So I know very little about the religion. I know very little about what they do and how they live, but I know they're very religious. So it's a little different for me because I'm not religious at all. So. Let's see how this works out. A thing that surprises me is the fact that U.S. even have a blue zone. Obviously, I'm thinking about their massive fast food culture. But the reason why Luma Linda differ from all the other cities is the fact that almost everyone here belongs to the Seventh-day Adventists. For the first time before a visit like this, I do feel a bit nervous. Maybe it's due to the fact that I'm a non-believer. I'm afraid that I'll not really understand their philosophy. But who knows? I might just as well come back home as a newly saved Seventh-day Adventist. Hey, good morning. <laughs> How are you? Really good. Welcome to Loma Linda. Thank you. I am so glad you made it. Come on in. Yeah, yeah just one thing before we go. We need to know. How do I pronounce your name? Mareka. 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 Yes. Mareka. Uh -huh. As you think English, you think of a rake. Yeah. Mareka. Yes. Mareka. Mareka. Uh, and and I... you're Nicholas. Yes. Mareka has been a Seventh Day Adventist for 46 years and is a very central figure here in Luma Linda. This is totally <laughs> cool. Come on Great. in, Nicholas. Okay, thank you. Breakfast oh, time. Breakfast time. Yes. Breakfast. Hey, breakfast. Yeah. And our breakfast is oatmeal. I can hear on your accent you're not yes. from around here, right? No, yeah. no, no, no. I am from the Netherlands. Oh. I was born and raised in the Netherlands. Okay. And uh, I came to this country 51 and a half years ago. So how did you end up here in the US? Then? Oh, it's a long story, Nicholas. <laughs> Please, I have time. Yes, maybe. oh, awesome. Okay, let me in between here. Yeah. What I do, I mm -hmm. have oatmeal. Yep. And I do a spoon of oatmeal. And then we do a little bit of hemp. Okay. So it's a better use than cannabis. We don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my time will come as I get old and yeah. I need to puff something, you know. But, uh, right uh, now you have hemp for breakfast instead. Uh, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> So the, and the, this is what I do. I do have filtered water here in my okay. kitchen. This is really smart, right? So what you've put here is like oatmeal, hemp, chia seeds, 
And cranberries. And cranberries. And then the oatmeal, and then you know. Yeah, kind and of then you just mix with up. some stir it with some water, with some and then water, yeah. three minutes in the microwave. Yes, eat from the farm, not mm. from the factory. That's true. that is the motto. That's the motto. You know, yeah. That's so, a really good thing, right? I I think it is the great. The more from the farm and less from the factory. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So how did a Dutch girl end up in the U.S.? Ah, here we go. You see, my husband was stationed in the army, ah. and um, anyway, see, they moved. He was in France, and then they moved him to the Netherlands, and so that is where I actually met. Ah. Um, I actually, I used to be a bartender at that time, so we were so far removed from each other's thinking and lifestyle, just beyond. Um, I was army there. officer, American, yes. met the Dutch girl there. Yeah. You fell in love. I and then eventually you ended up here in, in, exactly. in the US. Yes. But the church and his religion, you knew nothing about. Oh, nothing at all. So like me now. Yes, yeah. here we go. It's a good beginning. <laughs> because, uh, because the church in, in Holland is very similar to the Swedish church, yes, right? I mean, it's it very is. moderate. Kind uh, yes, of. very yeah. much so. Yeah. Um, it's not what it used to be. Mm. And uh, but anyways, and then I I got to know more about God. Mm. Uh, I read about Him, mm. but then I had this awesome experience. Experience, Nicholas. There was nothing like it. I was totally overwhelmed. So did you fall more in love with God than I've... with your husband, or? It's a different love. <laughs> what I should say when I fell in love with God. Mm. My understanding for my husband and his relationship became more pronounced. Mm. It became more real to me. All of this, thank you so much. Thanks. Let me put some I got them. goodies here. So, so your so your life here in Luma Linda, I mean the community. Yeah. What, what percentage belongs to the church? Oh, I would say at least ninety-five percent. Oh, that yeah. big. And, 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 and most people who belong to your church live a very healthy lifestyle. The majority of them do, yeah. yeah. We are very... Um, so why is that? The connection to all of this is we are God's creation. Mm -hmm. And but, he But you believe in, the, in the, the Bible, right? Yes, so, exactly. So it's, so it's the same as a... Yeah, but our body is the, the temple of God. That's what it says, you know? We are His temple. And in order to keep it whole, we want to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. We want to exercise. Mm. We just want to stay whole. Yeah. And this is part of Loma Linda living. Experience it, Nicholas. <laughs> Experience. It's great. You have to find, you have to kind of search. Yeah, to, maybe no, I do. Maybe you know? I do. And then maybe I haven't been open enough for it. Maybe I need to you open myself to, more. That is the key. Mm. So what's on the, on the agenda now? Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Yeah. I'm going to put this inside quick. Yeah. I'm going to change shirts, and yeah. then we're going to hit the treadmill, hit the Drayson. OK, perfect. Does it sound great to you? <laughs> Some awesome. exercise sounds good. Oh, wonderful. Healthy breakfast, and... Uh... Here we go. You got the right nutrients in, yes. so we can work it all. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Go. This is the Drayson Center. Here is the Drayson Center. Ah, Welcome. I'm gonna get fit. <laughs> Drayson Center opened in 1995. It's a health center here in Luma Linda and that advocates physical, emotional, holy wholeness. A lot of the people here training are older. Ah. Rhonda Spencer Wang is working as an associate professor in the Department of Public Health at Luma Linda University. Physical activity for the centenarians is very important. The type of physical activity they have done has um, changed over time, right, as they go through seasons in life. But they still are very active. You might run into them in the community. You'll see many of them walking, and if they can't walk on their own, they have a walker. So it's very important to their lifestyle, their mental well-being, their physical well-being to get out and do things. How old are you? I'll be 95 Saturday. Wow. Congratulations and happy birthday. Yes. Thank you. And I play golf twice a week. No way. way. Isn't he awesome? 95. I don't don't play fantastic. well that well nope. anymore, but <laughs> yeah. you know, through But it's fun. We it have is. some of our own rules, you know, if the ball rolls across the hole. It isn't our fault that gravity didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Don't you love that? That's yeah. awesome. So here at the university, we do a lot of work on longevity. Uh, for my research, I really focus on the people who are over 100 and looking at their childhood experiences, because we know that there are adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs, and when you get too many of these ACE scores, high ACE category score, the less likely you are to reach 100. So how old are you? Uh, I'm going to be 95 in August. It's oh, amazing. Is it? Yeah. Yes, you're amazing. So what's your secret? How, how do I become 95 now? What, uh, what should I do? You should start when you're young, although I didn't. We had no idea how to live healthily, except my parents were Seventh-day Adventists. Movement mm. and happiness and trusting God and being honest and I, I don't So that know. helps? That helps. So ACEs are adverse childhood experiences and basically it's trauma that a child would experience or might experience um, during childhood. And ACEs include things like extreme poverty, uh, parental harm if a parent physically abuses them or mentally abuses them, if they witness violence in the community, um, all those kind of things you can imagine that are really traumatic. So for instance, a score, an ACE score of four, uh, it's gonna significantly impact your life, right? A score of six or more, they say it shortens your lifespan by 20 years. Well, our centenarians all had a minimum A score of four or more, and a few of them have an A score of six. Yet, the oldest one is my husband's great aunt living at 106. So really, this here in Loma Linda is the first community to be identified that shows signs of resilience against ACEs. And basically, it's um, a super blue zone. How old are you? I'm just short of 80, 10 days a day. 80 years old? Yeah. You're 80? 80. Yes. Eight zero. First like this. <laughs> Yeah. That's good. Woo! Now pull up your leg. You pull, pull up your arm. <laughs> hold it, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Way to go, Heinz. It's something, huh? So Loma Linda centenarians living longer than the average is really a complex story. When I went and interviewed the centenarians, I see eight factors starting from childhood that look like they really afforded protection for them. The first one, which I call a keystone habit, is time in nature. Kinetic activity, so you can imagine as farmers, even across their lifespan, they move a lot. The third one is simple foods. Simple foods, right, back more to the ground, to the nature, and it's plant-based. And the drink of choice, well, for the centenarians when they were young, it was the only choice. It was water. Another connection is um, family and friends camaraderie, right? So high social capital. They really maintain these connections across their lifespan. Another one is, critical one, our faith foundation. Strong faith foundation. Another one is uh, resting reset, I call it. So they take breaks throughout the day. It's not the hectic pace that we see now. And as a parent, sometimes I'm guilty of it. I schedule 500 things, right? We have to take a step back and really rethink. The other is a positive mindset. Uh, it's just the belief that they can overcome things. Not that they have a happy child or a happy all the time existent, but the belief that the decisions and the actions they make is going to improve where they're at. And then uh, helping hand is another one I have. So along with um, this positive mindset, they have this uh, gift of wanting to help their friends and giving back. And so you live here in the I live in here in Loma Linda. Yeah. And you used to work at the university? or is still, Yes. Yeah? I started out at the university in 1967. And now I work at the SAC clinic. Uh, you, taking, oh, so, so you still work? I still work. Only a little bit, half yeah. day a week. And, and how old are you? I'm 87. 87? Yeah. Yeah. And still going strong? Oh, I have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> I just enjoy myself. Why should I quit? Uh, I don't know. And how often do you work out? Uh, four times, five times a week. Four to five times a week? Yeah, for a couple hours mornings. See, I can either rust out or wear out. <laughs> I'm not going to rust out, no. okay? <laughs> it's 
So, so what, what do you think about the kids today? About so, what's the big difference between like my generation growing up now compared to your generation? Be honest with you. Yeah. They don't understand what life is about, what's real, <clears throat> and so they want to get, and they don't realize that life becomes real when you give. And they need to learn to give. It's a striking point, actually, thinking about it. I don't think I do it at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, what, how does the younger generation spend their non-ordained time? Mm. And it's getting. Mm. And getting, you never get enough. No. When you start giving, and you see somebody smile because of what you did, that's so satisfying. Yeah. It brings joy to your heart. And it's it's a very small thing to do as well. Yes. It's not complicated at not all, at is all. it? Not at all. And it's can... not expensive. No, it's zero. Yeah. You go to the church here as well? Are you religious as well? Yes, yeah. I take it rather serious. Yeah. The statistics of longevity, when we compare here in Loma Linda to the rest of the U.S., uh, there's been a number of published studies looking at this, and it just shows, on average, about 10 years longer, right? And so that's just what the data shows. But I have a feeling, based on meeting these centenarians, that it's likely even longer as um, the health in America may not be quickly improving and the centenarians and the Loma Linda community is really maintaining these habits. So. The, the, the disparity between the rest and the blue zone, it may be widening. So you always do the same machines, Harvey? Tomorrow I'll do arms and chest. Oh, you change? I change. Why, why are legs so important when you get old to do? So I can get up from a chair. <laughs> I don't want to be stuck in the toilet. <laughs> it's a tough guy. You come in the mornings or in the afternoon? Morning. When, mornings. Yeah. We usually get here about 6.30. You're here 6.30 in the morning? Yeah. Are you done for today or are you gonna do more <clears throat> wins? No, no, I, I've already been here for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> You're strong. <laughs> Done. How was Harvey Elder? Amazing so, guy. I'm glad you had the opportunity to meet him. So yeah, thank that you. is totally you're very welcome. Hey, do you wanna come tonight and help me make some supper for all of us? Yeah, I would How does love that sound? To. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to do so. This old truck had wings that fly like an angel to the What a fun gym visit. It was so incredibly impressive to see the many elderly people being active and being so strong and fresh. I don't really know if I like the religion, but it does bring one good thing to the people of Luma Linda. They are all very active and take good care of their bodies. And I assume their diet is just as important. So we're doing vegetables, I guess. Yes, all, yeah. this is all gonna be vegetarian. Yeah. Um, with the exception, I have real cheese. I have okay. cheddar cheese I use, if you don't mind. Yeah, so, you, so your diet is not vegan? It's not vegan, no. I'm vegetarian. I, I think that I would probably be able to eat like this on the weekdays. But then on but, the weekends, I would probably would like some caviar, some salmon, some do you? <laughs> well, foie gras. And, and that's, that's okay too. That yeah. is okay. And you know, you just adjust to, oh, what do you want in life? Yeah. Salmon is is very good for you, it has the omega-3. Mm -hmm. But then where is it raised as well? Of course. Um, where I mean, is it yeah. Mercury, there is so much mercury. Of course, I mean, all food products with a lot of that contain protein yes. are not sustainable. That's you know, true. That, yeah, and it, that's that true. even goes for some of the vegetables, like soya beans, that's for true. example. Yeah, and this is pinto beans. Yeah. I use pinto beans and mm -hmm. you can use a, a pinto or a black, you can use any kind of beans mm. to put in here. You cook them. Mm -hmm. and then uh, you mash them mm -hmm. and then you put some olive oil in it and then uh, a little pepper and a little salt. Um, you can do a little taco sa seasoning in it as well, mm. but I just keep it very simple. So this is instead of minced meat or yes, something? Yes, uh, th this is our protein. Yeah. This is the protein for the meal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know the McDonald's, the Golden Arches, right? That might be universal. So that was even a big taboo to develop that here in the Blue Zone, right? 
Uh, the city has very strict standards of what they will allow. To get an uh, alcohol license, very difficult for a restaurant here in Loma Linda. Tobacco, we don't sell, you know, I don't see many smoke shops. Uh, so we take pride, a lot of pride, in maintaining the healthy habits of the city. Hey, Hello. Tom, Hello. how are you? Oh, hi. Nicholas, so that's my husband, that. Tom. Finally. Ready to eat, huh? You can yeah, smell the right. food already. Yeah, huh? I can smell it. Here you go. Please do take a plate and oh, then... Uh, Have you been we'll... to the gym as well? No, I have no. I do exercises here. Yeah. <laughs> he does exercises here. You prefer? You like your wife's cooking? It's oh yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, what he cooking is... there is to it. <laughs> it's good. He is very, uh, very gracious. So you're the guy that brought this Dutch woman to the United yeah. States, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this liberal Dutch and she woman. She gave me a life. I, yeah. You see? Hey. So the diseases that are less common is kind of a misnomer. We die of the same things that most Americans, you're gonna die of heart disease or cancer. It's just that you die of that at a much later age than what typical. Uh, you'll see people dying 50s, 60s of heart disease. I mean, you have a diet that's, you know, leaning towards uh, vegan and mm -hmm. yeah. you don't drink, right? No, no alcohol. No alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's that type of diet, but still you praise modern medicine. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. I mean, because mm -hmm. there are pockets and yes, parts of the world where people eat mm -hmm. very simple food, like with vegetables yes. and, and mm -hmm. don't have a processed food, but they don't have modern uh, medicine do. and yeah. modern hospitals, but you do. We do have cutting edge, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The medical uh, treatment is, is top edge. Is, uh, the medical treatment yeah. is top edge and we are very... Um, aware of um, uh, like the opioid mm -hmm. uh, crisis. That's a huge that problem have. in the it US, right? It is a huge Terrible. problem. And it is a problem in Loma Linda because we have had numerous doctors that would be uh, in, in our community, I'm not saying just at our institution, but all around that would provide opioids like uh, terrible. Yeah, like, and like candy it, it's, it's everywhere. And, th and those, those are tablets, right? These pills. are tablets, these are pills, these are pain medications. We have three times a week. Oxycontin, we... oxycodone, yeah, stuff like that. Fentanyl, you name it. Why do people get opiates? I mean, to start up. I mean, we don't even have them. I mean, I, I mean, I do. Th I've never heard of that problem in it, Europe. And, I don't know. Almost, it probably exists, but I, don't I know am why. ashamed to say ah. it has been prescribed way too much. People would, physicians would prescribe it, ah. and uh, people would take it for two, three weeks at a time, mm. and then they would go back, and the patient would say, "Oh, I'm still in pain," and the doctor would keep give prescribing. Give the stronger. Give him more. Give him more, and up yes. the, you know, up the dosage, mm. and cannot get up. It, it kills families. Yeah. The children are the victims of the circumstances oh, of, of the parents. Yeah, yeah. Because and the parents that, can't take care of the kids when they're exactly. on these strong drugs. Function. They you walk will, around like they're in a stupor they're or something. Zombies. Very addictive. It is unbelievable. The American opioid epidemic had its sincere outbreak in the 90s when uh, some uh, pharmaceutical companies started to aggressively market uh, painkillers, which was in fact opiates. Many doctors who had little knowledge about the long-term effects prescribed those drugs for their patients who had uh, minor problems like ache or other easy, easy health problems. In a very short time, uh, a whole generation of Americans got addicted to those uh, opioid painkillers and when they couldn't afford the prescription drugs, they went out on the streets. And this is when the, the market for synthetic drugs exploded. For example, uh, fentanyl, uh, which is about 100 times stronger than heroin. Uh, so today, uh, it has developed a huge national health crisis uh, with about two and a half million addicts and uh, approximately 85% of all the opioids uh, in the world are, is now consumed in North America. It's been an amazing day. Thank you very, very much for showing me all these things. My and, pleasure. Yeah. It has been an amazing trip today. Yeah. I and never I thought really I was going to meet, I mean, I meet so many interesting people <laughs> at a gym. Yeah. 
<laughs> that is an amazing place, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> okay, I understand that you live healthy, eat well, and avoid alcohol. Still, the city struggles with a quite large opioid addiction. Is it so that no matter your belief, people still have an urge of escaping reality? Uh, I'm now on my way to Campus Hill Church, where I'm going to meet up with Christian, who's a priest, and he's going to tell me more about his religion and uh, about life in the community. After having spent 24 hours traveling around in the city of Loma Linda, I really feel that the church is very present. They can be seen everywhere. In the very small town of 23,000 inhabitants, there are 20 churches. Hey, Christian. Nicholas. <laughs> Welcome to Campus Hill Church. Thank you. It's a beautiful church you have here. Well, I'm glad you came to visit. Yeah, excited. So, uh, how long have you been here in this church? Uh, about 17 and a half years now. 17 years? Yes. Wow, so you were very young when you came here. I just graduated uh, seminary. Okay. Um, and this was my first official pastoral job. Pa pastor, that's your title? That's my title here, Okay, yes. so you're not the priest. No, in the Adventist church, uh, we have pastors, which yeah. are the equivalent of priests in traditional Christian churches. That's interesting. So tell me a little bit about uh, your church, about the Seven Days Adventists, because I know nothing about them. I mean, nothing. <laughs> okay. The main belief is Jesus' return, uh, as we know it as a second coming, um, is imminent. Uh, thus, we're called um, Seven Day Adventists. Oh. Adventism pertains to an advent, to a coming. We believe that he went to heaven, mm -hmm. um, and we believe that he's coming back. That was his promise, that just as he goes, he will come back. But what, what will happen when he has arrived then? What's the post-Jesus second time on earth like? The arrival of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus, um, at the heart of it is the day of judgment. If, if, if all, all we have to do is just flip on a TV channel and we see a uh, whale that was found with so much plastic, mm -hmm. what's the fault of that sea animal? You know, what, yeah. what, what did it do wrong to be, to be under Treated such, like right? Mm. So, so that's, that's not right. Mm. That's not right. Uh, we see in the living as well as, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, uh, realms of, of natural phenomena, we, we see quite a lot of things that are not right. And the day of judgment is the day that makes all things right again so for everybody no and everything. Just a matter of connecting and going regularly to church um, has tremendous health benefits. In addition to the mental health benefits that I experience just each, uh, each Sabbath, when we go into Sabbath, I know my blood pressure immediately drops and lowers because I don't have to open my email. So when we go to that Sabbath, no computers, no nothing. And so I know immediately for myself personally, I can feel this sense of peace come over me. Why I'm here in Loma Linda is, of course, health, diets, the way that your church uh, teaches that the body is your temple, right? The temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. The scripture says that God gave Adam and Eve all of the fruit trees, every seed-bearing uh, tree as their food. Not any meat. Not any meat. As a matter of fact, all of the other created uh, beings were entrusted to Adam and Eve, and they were given um, the responsibility of caring for all of these animals. Uh, we believe in a vegetarian diet. Yeah. We believe in, in a healthy diet. We believe that uh, clean water is the best uh, to satisfy Beverages. our thirst. Yeah. Uh, and we believe that uh, all uh, vegetables that um, have uh, nutritive value are best for our bodies. Diet is an important part, but I think it's more living whole. 
It's just one component of the big picture. So if you're only focused on diet to reach 100, likely uh, you will be doing yourself a disservice because you have to live whole, which is why Loma Linda's motto is to make man whole. We believe that there is a strong component that pertains, number one, to our responsibility to care, care for all life, right? We are the ones who are entrusted. We, mm -hmm. We've proven that we could control pretty much all other life. We could hunt down an elephant that, that, that's way bigger than us. We, we could destroy and kill everything. Mm -hmm. I think that phase has to be history. Now we have to, number one, default to the original diet. So we don't destroy what God created. Correct. But, but you believe in the devil? Yes. In hell, yeah. But what will happen to him after Judgment Day? about the devil, what will happen to him after Judgment Day? We believe the scripture that says that everything evil and everything wrong will be terminated, will be destroyed. There will be an end to it. So what you're saying is that if I live a healthy lifestyle, I'm a vegetarian, I exercise, I live a nice life, but I'm not a Christian, I still would be even healthier and better off if I was a Christian. Absolutely. Uh, a strong uh, relationship with God is a major factor in a person's uh, quality of life. And you don't think that's just thanks to their diet and their being vegetarians and they're not drinking and then th that they have physical activity in their life? Is I, it also the, their faith correct. and their believing believe, God? Correct. I believe that all of those are good factors, including the genetics. Uh, there are people with great genes. But when you add the uh, component of a personal faith, that adds on top of what a good lifestyle, what a good genetic inheritance mm. already brings to the table. Yeah. If you take away the religion, it becomes difficult for our community, I believe, to live as long and as healthy. Uh, even religion in itself, there are studies showing that attending church and a faith in God, uh, they see less chronic diseases among that population, also because they're connected to that social capital as well. The faith in God and then also um, the social capital does tremendous for your mind, your body, and your spirit, right? And so also this belief that my life has a sense of purpose and it's in God's hands, it takes some of the stress off of me. I do really understand that one feel less stress and climate anxiety if you trust the belief that Jesus shall one day come back and fix all things us human have destroyed. You can probably earn quite a few extra years of your own life not having to bear these thoughts on your shoulders like most of us do. Luma Linda University has their own veggie-oriented dietitian education. I'm meeting up with their head teacher, Corey, who will teach me some vegetarian cooking. It'll probably be pretty far from the dishes at my restaurant. Hey, hello. So what are we doing today? We're cooking? Well, yes, I, that's what you said you wanted to do. I so. love to cook. Well, <laughs> I got out a few things for us and uh, I figured that we would make enchiladas with uh, rice on the side mm -hmm. and a um, vegetable salad called escabiche, okay. which is not a um, lettuce-based salad. It's a little bit different. So okay, cool. It's an interesting one. And, and there's no, nothing, like Luma Linda doesn't have its own cuisine. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, no, because the United States is such a uh, conglomeration of people from around the world. Mm. Corey is a Seventh-day Adventist and nutrition expert. He has worked in various restaurants all around the world. Why is this university focusing so much on health and diet? So it comes from the Adventist heritage. Um, we have always had a focus on keeping the body healthy. Mm -hmm. And so now we... Um, recognize that a vegetarian diet is uh, one of the better ways to do that. So, you know, Loma Linda's heritage now is being proven by modern science, and it's pretty cool to see. Mm. Pretty cool. The students here, are they all Adventists? No, we pull no. students from all over the place. Um, but we do require that our students go to chapel sessions. Whenever we have a new student who comes on campus, part of the um, orientation is that they 
uh, learn where the chapel is, and, and that's one of the things you have to accept if you're going to be a student here, is okay. you're going to be in, sitting in chapel. Mm. So, To be honest with you, when the researcher for this show told me that we were gonna go to the US for healthy food, I uh -huh. thought she was joking. <laughs> Because for me, as yes. a European, I don't think of the U.S. as a healthy nation. The U.S. does not have a reputation for healthy food. You're no. right. <laughs> Absolutely. But because of the fact that we are such an international group, mm. we do have enclaves where uh, people are eating differently from the majority. Mm. And I think Loma Linda is one of those places. Yeah. Um, yeah, we haven't had a McDonald's in Loma Linda forever. It just a couple of years ago, they were finally able to build one. And it was interesting, the amount of community backlash really? was substantial. And uh, I've been told, although I don't know that for sure, but that uh, the McDonald's has been challenged staying in business here in Loma Linda. Okay. <laughs> in general, for my community here in the Blue Zone, diet is very important, right? And we, we really look at eating more simplified foods, plant-based, um, beans, uh, drinking water, uh, no caffeine here. If you tried to find a cup of coffee on our campus, uh, I don't think unless it's hidden away somewhere in a faculty office, you're not gonna find coffee or, you know, or, or caffeinated beverages. And we're just trying to soften these. These are gonna be the stuffing for the inside of the enchilada. Mm. Now, a lot of times people are using uh, meats in the, ench in the enchilada. So it's beef or it's chicken or it's shrimp. I've seen shrimp before mm. as well. But obviously not uh, something that I want to do here mm. at Loma Linda since we are a vegetarian kitchen. Because you teach a vegetarian, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all of our clientele is looking for vegetarian food. So yeah. we need to do it in a different way. But it's, it's just interesting to, to think of because I think that me as a European and especially as a Swede, we think of vegetarians as, as either in, like environmental friendly people who don't want to animal to be slaughtered for the cost of food. Yes. Or we think of vegetarians as, you know, health freaks. Okay. I very rarely think people would think it as a Christian value. Oh, interesting. I didn't even know about it before coming here. Okay. I never even th had it slightly thought about that Christianity has a vegetarian Slant to it. Slant to it. The United States has been a hotbed of really bad foods that people love to eat, and it's because it's so available. As a European, it's very striking the amount of overweight people oh, when you yes. come to the U.S., which is like, <laughs> it, yes. it, it, it's, uh, it's very, you know, we're not used to it. It was interesting. Yeah. The yeah. first time that I ever went to Europe, I was really surprised at portion sizes. Mm. They're so different between what we have in the United States versus Europe. Oh, okay. So, so you think maybe it's a, is it, uh, that's one of the reasons you, you eat too much? Yes, absolutely. So it's People not only... People are just simply getting too many calories. That's oh. our biggest struggle. Oh, right. Because, like I said, it's so available. I mean, you go to the grocery store and you buy a little personal size container of yogurt. Mm. And it's this big. Mm. Go to Europe and buy a personal size yogurt and it's half the, the size. size. Yeah. So how do... It, it's a big struggle. Yeah. All right, so to, uh, to do these, what we're going to do is just dip them in the hot sauce and that's going to soften up the tortilla and then we'll be able to roll it. Mm -hmm. Just getting it coated, put it in the pan, put some of our filling into it, and it doesn't take a lot. These shouldn't be overfilled. You want to have a, a finger-sized piece. Mm. So wrap it up and put it on its uh, open end so that it holds it together. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go with the next one. Fill all these. And then we'll pour some sauce over it, and then uh, it goes in a warm oven just to melt the cheese, and then it's ready to eat. The young people that live here in the blue zone, some is similar to the centenarians, yet some is changing, right? The values are somewhat changing. However, I believe it's still better off than the surrounding communities because we still have um, a strong faith connection that is really our cornerstone and we really value. But my concern is uh, with the electronics and the loss of time in nature, our younger generation are making decisions um, that may decrease their health status, right? Spending more time on computers, less time outdoors. So across the lifespan, really concerning of how the blue zone will be viable. So my goal here is to really help us reconnect back, um, save our own blue zone. If other blue zones need saving, I'm here to help and um, be a service. That's 
That's a vegetarian dish. You have protein in there. You put the black beans inside. Mm. Um, there's actually quite a bit of protein in the rice and mm. in the corn. So mm. you've got the protein component fully taken care of. Mm. And then, of course, the rice is your grain. Um, and then the uh, vegetable, you've got plenty. So it is a complete meal. Mm. It's delicious. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Yeah. So easy to make, and yet ugh, one of my favorite things. Mm. Mm. Love this dish. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's know, my pleasure. Yeah, I know so much more now, it, and it makes sense more. Good, yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm happy that you were able to come and experience some of our kitchen and some of our cooking and just uh, be a part of a little bit of Adventist culture. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. I I'm going to finish this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heading home. I mean, Luma Linda, it's not the most exciting town I've visited. It's pretty boring, actually, and it's very yellow and dull and very suburban. But I must say, I, I kind of like the Seventh-day Adventists. I, I like the way that they look at food. I like the way that they want us to treat our body well and want us to eat more vegetables. There's nothing wrong with that. I must admit that. And that's something that I'm going to bring with me home. I'm probably going to cook more vegetables for my kids back home. And those enchiladas, those tortillas, they were good. In my opinion, religion do most often lead to limitations and conflicts. This is actually the first time that I've seen something that I believe can result in something positive. I mean, they're healthy and live long due to their strong belief. Oh, to you, no time to waste. I'm heading home, oh, 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 o